All right, let's move to old business. Uh, press packet, pl uh, press plus packet number 82. So one thing that we used to do with this um, is we provided the board the first read at the last board meeting just so you have it. It was a small packet this time, so we included the whole packet. Again, just for your references, but if you'll notice, we're only recommending changes on two or edits on two, and then we had some additional policies we wanted to review, add some possible edits. The way I want to do this going forward in the future is so we'll always provide you the whole packet for a first read at a board meeting. But when we get to a board meeting like tonight when we want to discuss it instead of giving you all 64 pages again, we'd like to just bring in the ones that with our edits attached to them so that we can just discuss the ones that have edits to them. If you had something that caught your attention from the previous packet, you would refer back to the packet when you received it. Okay. So as you see tonight, uh, there are only a few that have some changes. The first one is in regards to our fund balance. In the same book that uh, Mr. Walsh refers to in regards to the budget and fund balance accounting that the state does provide as a reference material, um, they suggest between a 30 and 35 percent fund balance. Uh, we discussed whether it was better to have a range or to have a specific number. Um, the advisory council thought it'd be better to have a range. Um, and I will ask that either Mike or Ed can provide some color uh, to that. Well, the 20% fund balance, just going back in time, was back down from where it was at 33%, just so we could <coughs> get through um, several years with, uh, without having to do something. And if you drop below your, your fund balance, I think they require you to put a plan on how you're going to get back there. And how we would get back there the last time we did this was we were going to do a referendum. And the referendum was placed on the ballot and didn't pass. Um, so now that we've, you know, have a permanent superintendent and are moving forward, um, I think it's a good idea to go back somewhere in the area of the 33% that we had. And we looked up in that book, and that book had a range. And I thought it was a good idea to, to use the range and um, because we don't want to be tied to a specific number. You know, if we said 33%, and then what happens if it's 32%, then we're going to have to get back a plan to get it back up that 1%. So in the language in there, we put, you know, that it's, not less than 30 to 35 percent so we're going to go back this this change to this policy would go back to put us back where we were several years ago where one policy said 30 percent and one policy said 33 percent and then a couple years ago we combined those two and only came up with this one where there was a fund balance and uh you know, we talked about paying our bills. They recommend 30 to 35 percent because you need money in the bank to pay your bills so you're not in a position to have to borrow the money if the county can't get you your levy proceeds in a timely manner because of whatever procedural items they have to go through in the triennials. So that's kind of some of the discussion that we had uh, and and that some of the items I think we should, as a board, in my opinion, put a fund balance up there that's going to protect us from having to uh, borrow money should the funds come back as they had in the past prior to the last couple of years in an October or a November situation. And... I'm not sure what that would do. That wouldn't really help us if we had to collect our funds after the December 1st because on December 1st we have our bond payments due. So it doesn't really protect us from that, um, which, is, which would be extraordinary. I think that's only happened once in the last 20 years that I can recall. 
but this would protect us from having to borrow the money to pay our bills through tax bills coming in October, November. Wouldn't that, this, the way it's currently worded, wouldn't this force us to take money out of working capital and put it into education fund? Tim? That's what I was going to ask. Because the way it's worded now is 30 to 35 percent of each fund. Right. In each fund. We, at, we were going into the beginning of the year with $540,000 beginning balance in the education. That's not 30% of $17 million. Um, you, you compare it to the expense in that fund. $17 million in education. So 30% of that. So we'd have to clean out the working, ca the working cash. Yeah. So I would suggest you go change the wording of that, say the overall operating or versus, right. because that service is not going to have, right? I, right. I know we're in, a, we're in a half a year lag with debt service, I believe is what we're, but we may run into a year where, so I would it, suggest and you look And I can't word, recall, but the prior two policy items, one of them was the operating funds. Right. I don't know if that's fun. And then one of them was in each fund. And I thought we deleted one of those policies. And then we, we did. did. We did under the. Then we did on that one. Yeah. So and so I, I would yep. I would also agree that the operating fund should be combined. So <coughs> so that the working cash fund would get into a computation with all the other funds combined. Makes I'll sense. check four colon ten fiscal and business management and four colon thirty. Mr. McGinnis and I will check that and see if we have that language in our the, current policy. The other yeah. question is if we, uh, which is it based on a cash or accrual basis? The, the financials? Well, we say that we're going to maintain a fund balance uh, to let not less than 20%. Is that 20% on an accrual basis or a cash basis because they're different? We keep our books mostly on the cash basis. And I don't have a problem, if I, but I think it should say it in there because... You should say something like on the accounting system that the books are maintained. All right, so... Uh, oh, you can't say that because we tell everybody we're on a cruel basis. That we report to the state that we're on a cruel basis. We do our audit on a cruel basis, but we're reported every month on a cash basis. All right, any other questions on this? I have one question. So if, if we do this and we have a bleak year and we fall below that mark, does it force us then to take out working cash bonds? No. No, it forces you to develop a plan okay. to get you back in that position. Such a plan could be running a referendum. Such a plan could be raising class sizes, riffing teachers, raising pay to participate, all the things that we've done to help us get back to where we needed to be. Okay. And could we change the first paragraph? We just, we're, we're, we're excluding $350,000 out of this because we don't have the self-insurance fund in there. And to get the wording of those funds correct, because the way we're calling it is education, self-insurance, operation, maintenance, transportation. Can we match them up to the way we are seeing the reports? Yeah. Because you don't have 350 in there because of well, We're closed that fund, didn't we, Tim? Self-insurance no, fund? It's included in the education fund. Okay. Yeah. I'm wondering if this is not matching our last know, update. I'll check on that. Balance. Yeah. All right, any other questions on this? Are we okay with the target number? Uh, everybody all right with this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay, let's move on to the next one. All right, hold on, somebody ready to know. Okay. It's right fast. Um, 93? Right accurately. Yeah. 93 is just changing the um, coordinator, complaint manager, or non-discrimination coordinator, and then the two complaint managers. The advisory council and I reviewed this and uh, we thought it would be best to keep the superintendent and the principal out so that there's levels of management that can then intervene for interventions or resolutions <coughs> if there's complaints and or discrimination. And we also discussed to Tim's 
point Thank you. that the people who are in these positions need to be trained. Right. Oh, they are. Uh, they need yeah, to be. They need to be trained with respect to how to receive complaints, how to deal with them, et cetera, so if, if this is going to work properly. Well, I, my, my question is a little higher level yeah. than that. I can process a non-discrimination, I can process any kind of claim, but if I don't understand what the issues are, on training and discrimination, you know, I don't know how no, you're no. familiar with people get training on EEO rules. And, and that was that. my that was my, my We have a call in the Todd the Falk training would be okay. this is the law, this is, is, it, what is there a workshop for. that These they can attend or something? Okay. And is it where our intent to have them trained pretty close to when we change the policy and as soon as we can as possible? As soon okay. as we can. I'd be happy to help you on it. Too. I still have to ask the other one and you yeah. can, you, I apparently discussed this, but you know, no disparage against him, but he's part-time. Is it appropriate to have a part-time employee have this kind of position? Who, you know, we thought it was okay because with the complaint managers being the first level of taking the complaints okay. that he could then coordinate on Daisy's here. Thank you. And we also discussed uh, the two positions we did make complaint managers were one of each gender. Correct. That was good thinking. <laughs> I noticed that though. All right. Any other questions on this? Yeah, can, I, can I go one more question just to throw out to the policy people um, on the fund balance? <laughs> <laughs> we, we do have potentially some money coming in. It's probably going to go to the working cash initially. Then it's going to be transferred out, probably, it, it maybe, to the life safety. I don't know. Could you guys at least accept? Um, review that to see if there's any implications <coughs> on fund balances and, and, and that kind of stuff because it's going it may go into a or what we have to do with the monies initially. Isn't that Tim's question every almost every is, meeting? Is, 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 what are the rules on transferring the money? No, no, it's not even that. Yeah, because we're going between <laughs> operating right. versus right. capital and yeah. Just look at that. When you park it in the working cash, it's gonna be part of the operating I know. into the balance. And when you Transfer it out. Transfer it out. It's not going right. to. It's not going to be an expenditure over there that it has to compare to the balance. Just saying, ponder that. Yeah. Okay, ponder. Well, All right. Perhaps we'll the finance that. advisory council should ponder that. All right. Uh, well, we never meet. So. Uh -oh. <laughs> there we go. Uh, next one is 109. Right. 109. Purchases and contracts. No. Yeah. Page 109. Page, page 109. Purchases and contracts was part of the five, uh, just an additional one we added. Um, yeah, that's the next, that's yeah. one we added. Yeah. I think Mr. Welch is referring to another one he might want to talk about, but the one we added was on 109 in regards to purchases and contracts. This has been a discussion with the board. So, the advisory council suggested no contract shall be renewed or extended more than twice without conducting complete bid process. So it gives us the administration flexibility with contracts that if things are working, they have the ability to renew it, but there's also puts a cap that it can't be renewed more than twice. One question was submitted to that so that there is some kind of limitation on those renewals so that we don't extend them out too far. If we had a five-year term, you could go right. 15 years. Well, the only thing to contract. that, though, is that the board would, would approve all those renew All the contracts, the language protects the board in that all contracts have to be approved <coughs> by the board. So although the administration could recommend renewing it, if the Four board didn't years. like the, the terms of that agreement or the length of that agreement, they could just uh, uh, suggest to go back or make it yeah, shorter. But as a practical matter, by the time you recommend a contract, you've decided we're going to go forward with it. I'm just saying, <coughs> if if you put both parameters, so if you initially let somebody in, uh, you know, grant and we agree, whoever the board agrees to say a five-year contract that you can't renew it if the total term is, you know, more than, pick a number, six, seven, eight years, so that, you know, if it's a five-year agreement, at some period of time, regardless of how many times you renew it, it's time to see what's going on in the market. So. You know, if you if you agree to a five-year term, that's fine. But maybe on that one, you should have to bid it out at the end of the five years instead of, you know, planning to bid it out for another five years. Uh -huh. I, I would think five years would be too soon. 
because you have a three-year contract for the vending, so you can't renew the three-year contract for the vending because you, you're over five years. So you wouldn't be able to renew any three-year contracts at six. Well, I, I actually suggested six, but I used five as an, if you had a one agreement with a one five-year term was my point. It, it seems to me put some parameter in there so it couldn't be extended for us so if you went 10 years without bidding. I think 10 years is too long. I, I mean, if we're going to have, I think contracts should have a limit. I think three years is a long time. And my personal preference is each contract it should go out to bid. But if you want to have one renewal, I mean, we're required to go out to bid. doesn't mean that you can't renew the company you're happy with, but you don't know what's out there unless you go out for bid. This doesn't prevent the board from going out to bid after a contract. For example, the busing contract, it wasn't a very good performance on the contract, so we went out to bid after one and didn't. it wasn't recommended that it be renewed. So it's not, it doesn't, prevent you from going out to bid. But it also forces the board to go out for bid if the board should be becomes friendly with a particular company. It, it, that's I, that's why it says not more than two times. I contrast your two comments. We were prepared not to go out for bids with the busing contract because they had awful service. Right. If we like their service, we go forward with the idea we're just going to renew them. And by the time it comes to the board, and, and we've been told this, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna take six, nine months to send an offer for bids, the contract will be expired. We really have to uh, renew it. So the, the only reason to put a parameter on a time limit and you know, six, and again, it, my recommendation is it force, it, regardless of renewals, I agree with you, to renew something twice for three years, that doesn't necessarily give me heartburns, but burn, but at some point, five, six years down the line, the, I'm suggesting that the administration knows they have to go out for bid. They can't come and plan with the idea of renewing it and then bring it when it's, you know, really the board doesn't have a choice at that point. Well, that's how it's written. It's just you don't agree with the time period. And that, that's good discussion. But we brought this forward so that we would uh, address the concerns that some board members say you got to go to bid every time and <coughs> the practicality is you don't always it's not always good to go to 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 bid or to bid every time so it's sort of where do you want to get the get the medium in between you know a lot of how 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 is the cleaning contract how many years is that well we that's the same. Th that was originally what was a five year. Do you remember, Kevin? We extended I it say, for I think it's five, four, 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 four. We extended it for two. No, we went five years. We went five. Well, we got it was extended money. before I got here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you had a basic three year contract and you renewed it twice, that would be nine years. Right. Or after two years, you renewed it for another three. So you're at five years. Right. And maybe after two years, you renew it for another three. So <coughs> before you hit the nine-year mark, you would be having to bid it out under the not more than two. Just I think it, it's a simple thing. Once the board can agree, is that you know shall not be renewed more than twice, or for for a cumulative of eight years or six years or oh, ten I, years. I just I think it should not be renewed more than once. I don't think you can find any non for profit company that has as liberal policy as we have. If we are using public funds and we want to be transparent, why don't we want to go out for bid? Some of our contracts though are one years also. Yeah. So you got to be careful because you, you, you don't want to have to be bidding your yearbook out every year. Right. So All I right, mean that's that's why we have some flexibility built in there so that those that are one I do understand the concern of yeah, as, as, as much, there's not a lot, but there might be a five-year out there that we don't want to say, hey, it gives me flexibility to renew it twice, and it's 15 years before yeah. we look at the service. Yeah, we have I, I totally understand that. So if we can come up with a reasonable number of years, I'll make sure the administration works in within that. Okay, so what's that reasonable amount here? Six? Eight? I think, I 
think six is as long as you should ever go. Eight, six. How about seven. <laughs> all right, we'll go seven. I don't care. Seven, all right? Are you everybody right with seven? No. So, so, so how does that work with a three-year contract? Then? That means you could extend it the first time, but you couldn't extend it the second time. For more than a year. So more than a year. So and if it's a two-year contract, you can do it the, the two times like you planned, but not a third. And if it's a one-year, which I'm sure you gave it some thought, you're stuck. You, even on your own plan, you can only do it for three years. Okay. I love it. All right. Are we using seven because that's in between six and eight? I'm yeah, just, well, somebody said six. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm, I, I'm saying I can six make or eight. A, I can make it a practice, and I think, Tim, will, most of our large contracts are two or three year contracts. So, I mean, if, if the, the, you know, saying that, buses were three, um, food service was three, well, if you have was two, three. If you use six years and you have two or three years, None of them could go beyond the second extension. If you went eight, the, um, the, the most we could do is a two-year extension. Two year, and you couldn't go a third time. You could, couldn't go a third time with the three, so. All right, is eight all right? They all no, have the same I mean, practical well, I know you said no, but is it? Yeah, but eight is two boards. Okay. I mean, people are on a board for four years, so you could well, so lock is in so a... Is seven. But when you renew the contract, you got the board's got to vote on it. Yeah, the board has to vote on it. So yeah, but I'll, I'll, keep, I'll say it again. The, the problem is that both the vendor and the administration need to know at some point it can't be renewed. They can't go with the, we'll bring it to the board, and <coughs> there's not enough time to bid it. And that's, that's what, what we're, we're trying, trying to accomplish. That's what I'm suggesting to try to avoid. Okay. To tell you the truth, six, seven, or eight probably have the great majority of the agreements the same ramification. So. All right. What do we want to do? Is eight a cap? Eight no, a cap. I think we need to go lower because eight is a long. Okay. How many people will have any no problems with eight? Uh, yeah, I, I, I would just go just to go with six, and it's a board and a half. I mean, it it has the same effect. It's. Looks like we're putting a little more control on it. How do you feel about that, Kevin? Though I just want to think about any of our contracts. I mean, John, you are an advocate of transparency, and certainly at the <coughs> county, would you go out for bid almost every contract? Do you have comment? Yeah, they could. They go to like twenty-four thousand. Nine hundred, so they don't have to bid it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And well, the no, thing, no, the thing we're talking about the cap on. Top why don't we do of this? Why don't we do right? this? Yeah. Have the administration come back with a recommendation, Five. review it by the policy, and then that's the number. See, the thing I'm concerned about is like with the bid process is that are you required to go with? I mean, we'd have to just make sure as we work on the bids is that we're getting the services we need and that we're not just always searching for the lowest bid because we did that with the buses and that didn't work out for this. Record. Well, that's true with any bid, but if you have a company for eight years because you're comfortable with them, eight years is a long time. Many companies don't even last eight years. And technology certainly don't last eight years. And so the new efficiencies of any company in an eight year period could change dramatically. And if you're not going out for bid or submitting RFPs, you wouldn't keep your text. If you keep your textbooks eight years, that's a long time. Well, Laura, we got textbooks like we got a lot of them now. Yeah. So I don't, I mean, that's. All right, so let's do this. We're, uh, here, here's, here, here's, here's, here's my concern, and, and, and I'm looking from the standpoint of a vendor. If a vendor knows that they got a short cycle here, are they going to be as competitive in pricing and, and even all the you know if you if you're out bidding with three vendors the vendors know they see a policy that says oh we only have a short life like cycle Six here life system I, I know, to cutting down to a short I, I know oh, okay. I'm just saying but if it if it's a short year time frame and then they have to you know they have cost to get this contract set up are they gonna are they gonna be as competitive and, and I'm just throwing that out there I don't know and 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 you know and all three of them are, you know, if you have three that are going to go bid, are all three going to look at the same and go, oh, it's going to be, I know they're going to go out to bid in two years or a year or three yeah. years. You know, how competitive am I going to be if I know I can, you know, lock in and potentially have a ability to go without bidding? 
you know, so this is eight years or seven years or whatever minister, it is. Let the administration come back and review by the policy, and that's you can vote up and down. We yeah. like the number. Yeah. Happy with that. All right. Uh, next one is two colon two six. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got a question on the goods and services revenue provided. What's and, that? And, and, what number? You know, we just. What's which number you want? What number? It's is the that? same five. policy. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. Number five: goods and services generate revenue. Okay. Right. I mean, we're living with a resident on the cell tower, cell tower who's not giving us any revenue. And yet we, we, we see some of these guys giving us, how much revenue did we generate on the cell tower? 60? 41,000 just from Verizon. Right. Yeah. So did somebody approve? I know the argument was they had to move the cell the, to off of the chimney onto the tower. But what was the cost, and did, was that a board approval situation? And, and do we have? There was a board. Approval. It was board approval. The board did approve. Yeah. So what happened was they had you had it on the chimney. You said, hey, we're tearing it down. They're like, whoa, 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 we have an agreement here. Okay. They so then put that temporary tower up. Yeah. All the way up, and we're running generators, diesel electric generators. So you guys did a cost analysis that said we're going to give up forty thousand dollars for five years in exchange for them to, to move it about or whatever the number here but if you're the i'm sure they told them I, what I'd if you say there's they no would record get you there's no record to support that but if so you look at they so built a tower that then the other providers attached to see what i'm saying so they, they had the one tower then they moved it to where it's now it is and the other providers went on top of it now i don't know what the cost was there was a Prior to we us coming on, the cell I mean? the cell company paid for that tower. Yeah, we didn't we didn't pay to put that tower up. But that was okay. during your time that you guys voted yeah. on. Do you recall I, what the? No, yeah. no that, that was, was after me. It was, that was you came before on. us. Before us, mm -hmm. it was all done deal. Okay. All right. So right now we don't there is have, a contract. There's no requirement for us to approve um, cell tower revenue. Yes. Yes. If the contract comes due again. Yeah. Right. The board approved the Verizon contract. Yeah, we approved yeah. the. Yeah. So the only contract that you'll have to approve is when December. But is that in those contracts? Well, at the very beginning. Yeah. Right. We but when, the when December. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. purchases yeah. and contracts shall be entered contract. into in accordance with state law. Okay. Yeah. So when the Verizon one was just finished up, we kept talking about it. Talk, that was okay, all under that, my administration. Yeah. We did that. And the and board the third approved sentence, it. First paragraph: All contracts shall be approved by the board. So there's a contract with the cell tower, and right. there's a contract with the sub carrier on the tower. Those are contracts approved by the board. Right. And so just to let you know, before they even talked about it, Tim came to us and had his, our lawyer, who does the cell towers, letting us know that the contract was being negotiated to make it happen. All right. Let's move on to uh, two colon two six zero uniform grievance procedure. Another again, just address making consistent same change. So All they're right. going to get they're going to get same that grievances. Okay. A lot of training going on. Uh, then we go to one thirteen. That was the change. I thought there was one more. No, there's not. That's the four. I'm looking for the red. I don't see it. And I want to bring it back to Mike Welch. Had a question on. There was one on the professional development of the board. Was that new or you, you that had we accepted the IASB changes on this? Okay. But there was one under the five year review. I want to say it's policy What's two. Page? The number where I told you to write down. Uh, two, uh, <laughs> two, two, 270, was it? Or 20? 626. No, it's two 200. Two, 170. What page is it on? Do you know? It will be on page. I don't know why this keeps happening. Uh, Would it be in the prior packet? Yeah, no, it's in the packet you have in front of you. Hold on. Under it's on page uh, 100. 2 colon 170? Yeah. Yeah. And the question was, just just discussed this, uh, this afternoon, should the board consider adding uh, an additional paragraph that once it selects its architect, engineers, and land surveyors to protect the board so that we have a copy of all documents they prepare. Something of that nature? When, you know, when we transitioned the board and when we transitioned the administration, in my view, we found a lot of areas where we should have had documents. It wasn't around. And we didn't. You know, the common phrase I would say is 
Well, when you looked in the drawer, was the drawer empty? Yes. I put together all the construction documents and, and, and scanned them in so that we could have them. Now, if we're going into this next phase going forward, I'm just suggesting that the board consider what policy we do have and perhaps what policy we should develop or, or find out about to have a policy to archive our records because, you know, there's certain things that we didn't have, like the last survey, we had to go to the state to get it. And so, there was other documents we had to go back and ask the architect to get. Well, the, I, I completely in support of us having, I assume we have a record retention policy. And, you know, we keep them, but we can't really put in our policy a duty on the contractor. What we could put in our policy as a duty on our administration to assure that contracts with these types of vendors require the vendor to provide us the deliverables, and, you know, a copy of it, and that the, you know, someone, the keeper of the records has to make sure that we keep them. Right. Right. Something, something like that. So when is in the policy committee come back with a recommendation on that? We'll do. We'll do. Thank, Thank you. you. Anything else on the uh, press packet? Uh, question. So do we, do we not have a document retention? I thought we, we do. Did. But we that's do. what I think dealing more with records, student records, employee records. Oh, okay. I don't think that deals with necessarily our architectural engineers. And I think Tim is more correct. I think when we did the new art contract with DLA, we made sure there was verbiage in the bid and in the contract that electronic copies had to be provided to the all documents <coughs> and drawings. So, what so I don't know if it's an if it's something that is that's I mean technically a vendor isn't isn't re <coughs> Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not accountable to our board policy. Right. But they would be if it's if it says in the, 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 in the contract. Right. But and I'm not saying this is something that needs to be done in the next month or two, but as we look forward in the next two years, something's sure. going to perhaps agree. take place. Even in the life safety area, there's going to be some kind of construction, perhaps some kind of contracts. Right. And, and One thing we're trying to put in place now, even with Joel, is is we get the documents from Carrie, a second set is saved on the general school server with Mike Connors. So that there's two two electronic copies in district possession, not only with our facilities manager, who also is a purchased service, but also in our district vault. So we need to just record that into a written policy. You gotta put it in the policy. But would it be advantageous to expand our document retention to have a section for those kind of documents? Well, some somehow let the in policy, policy let the policy do somehow that. address that concern. I, I just make a suggestion. Kevin has hired the IASB to put our administrative procedures together. He, I would suggest the record retention <coughs> procedure. Is where you would put that in, and you know, maybe Kevin could check and see if that's one of the documents they're going to present for him. Does that make sense, Kevin? Sure. Okay. Anything else on Press Plus Packet 82? 